Me run fast good, all Hopis run fast good. 116 years ago, that's what Arizona's first Olympian, Louis Tuanama, famously told legendary coach Glenn Pop Warner before joining the track team at Carlisle Indian School in Pennsylvania, then winning a silver medal in the marathon at the 1912 Games. Today, Tuanama's name isn't likely to show up on a list of the state's top all-time Olympic athletes. His story largely forgotten to history, unless you travel to Second Mesa, Arizona, where Tuanama grew up and where, over the weekend, they held the 50th annual race in his name. Sunrise, the first Sunday of September. Beautiful morning here at uh, Second Mesa, Salopa Beach, right. Lewis's hometown. Go! Year 50 of the Lewis Tuanama foot race. Go, good it's competitive, but more than that, it's sacred. For Hopi, running is a spiritual journey. It's listening to things around us. It's the wind, it's our breath, it's our footsteps. Connect with the flowers, the rocks, the scenery, the fresh air. We feel that we pray while we run. Hopi pray to the clouds for rain, to shower the crops they farm in the valleys below. And they pray for the tribe's health. You want to give your energy to your family. So when you, we're running, we're always taught, you know, keep them in your mind, and that pours out. So as 5K and 10K runners of all ages and abilities go down, around, and back up the mesa the ancient village sits on, they are not just cheered on, but thanked. The people who are watching, they say for pride, they say thank you. Because they receive that strength. Men say kwakwe and the women say asquali. Words that hold so much meaning to me and to our community. This community, this race, remembers the first Hopi runner to become a national source of pride. We consider him our, our hero, Native American inspiration. Louis Tuanama, one of thousands of Native American youth forced to leave their home in the early 20th century and attend government-sanctioned boarding schools. At the Carlisle Indian School, he was forbidden to speak his language or practice his religion. He was not yet considered a citizen of the United States, but he represented the country overseas in the 1908 and 1912 Olympics, where the 5'4", 115-pound marathoner won a silver medal with a time that established an American record. Lewis overcame so much by being taken away from his family and he turned that tragedy into an American uh, legacy. Now, Tuanama's descendants run on the same trails he learned to run on. Here we are in 2023, stepping where our ancestors have stepped and doing the same thing that they were doing, which was running with prayer. A course that is both beautiful and brutally difficult. It's like life. Life throws you all these curve balls and there's ups and downs, but you just keep pushing forward. Life gets hard sometimes, and sometimes you have to dig within yourself. That's what Louis Tuanama did, and what runners here have done on this day in tribute to him for the last 50 years. That mentality and strength of running is still in us. You just gotta find it. It's up to you to kind of persevere and carry on the strength that your ancestors have left behind. We're still keeping that, that spirit and that running alive today.